So was directing everything you dreamed it would be and more? I learned that many of the parts of the system that we accept just to be true, the way a film set works, the hierarchy and how it exists, the process and how it exists, are actually something, it's actually something we have more control of than we assume. So when I got onto a set, it was like, okay, I'm finally steering this ship. Do I have to steer it the same way I've seen guys do it or can I do my own thing? And I can do my own thing. So that was exciting to say, I'm gonna change the way this usually works. For instance, before the first day of shooting, I sat down the cast and the crew and I said, I know there is a necessary hierarchy in place for efficiency in any organization, but I wanna let you know there is no difference in the value between any of you. This, this grip electric is the same value as this leading actress. And if we can really embrace that philosophy, things will move differently. And of course they did. Sharing information with everyone. I think in any organization there's a tendency to share information with a very limited group. Right, or very vertically, right? Exactly. And I said, we are going to share information with everyone. Every person on this 120 person film crew will understand what we're shooting and why and how we're going to do it. And that changed the efficiency because everyone was willing to work harder and faster because they felt valued. And that was really empowering. I enjoyed hearing people say, this is my best experience. I've been in this film business for years and this is my favorite experience. This has given me faith in this business again. So I loved the opportunity to use what I have learned and to make it a better environment for the actors as well because of course my personal experience allowed me to give them a better time, you know, even directing a sex scene. I thought, okay, I'm finally gonna teach everyone what a closed set means. And I said to, to our actresses who are doing this intimate scene, I said, when you are on your next film set, I want you to demand what I'm gonna show you today. A closed set means the people in the room are the essential crew members. Instead of an operator filming the scene, I had the cinematographer operate, boom, one person gone. Instead of any ADs or anybody else, it was me, the person holding the camera, and a focus puller and the actors. All the monitors around a set, usually there's 30 monitors at different places on a set, all turned off. off yeah. Having an AD police that walk around, people try to turn the monitors on, they have to turn those off. It takes a lot of effort, but it's one example of sh providing an example of how things can be and telling these actresses, now go off and demand this new standard. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> um, there must have been, though, times when you had to, you know, it sounds like you, you created an incredible, awesome environment for everybody working on the film. But there must have been times when you had to be like, okay, people, let's do this, and you had to be direct. I believe in clarity but, and directness, but, but without making it, un, I, you know, it, I, it doesn't ever have to become aggressive. But the thing of fear of being a bitch is a real thing, and it's through, from politics to Hollywood and everything in between, of course. I remember Halle Berry saying to me years ago, she gave me the advice, she said, when I finally was comfortable with being a bitch, my entire career changed for the better. <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, that's brilliant. I, I do think we have to get out of our own way in that way. Yeah, Let, let's talk about the Oscars because um, a lot of people were bemoaning the fact that a female director wasn't nominated this year. Uh, there's been a lot of conversation about, I interviewed Greta for my podcast about Little Women and men not wanting to see it. And I remember for this same episode, I talked to Meryl Streep. I'm quite the name dropper today, aren't I? <laughs> anyway, I called Meryl and yeah. I said, Meryl. Um, no, I, I, I asked her, I said, well, you know, this was before Me Too, before Time's Up. Like, why are there so few female directors in Hollywood? Like, what is this, you know, what, it, what is keeping that from happening? And she said men don't really like to see women, st st uh, movies about women, but women do like to see stories about men. And yet, you know, as many men come up to me to say they love Booksmart as women, truly. And so I believe men do want to see these stories you know, in some ways, we shouldn't care about accolades and awards, it's about the work. And in other ways, those awards lead to opportunities and pay parity. And so it's a complicated thing. You can't be what you can't see, so we have to lift up these women and show everyone 
that, that they're here and that it's an example. I, when I got my DGA card in the mail for the first time, I, I, I opened it and I burst into tears because Nora Ephron was on the card. Every year they pick a different, every time they reissue the card, they pick a different director and it's always a man. And the year I got it was Nora Ephron and I was so moved because I thought, male directors are getting this card too. And they're looking at this and they're seeing an incredible female director as an example of what they're aspiring to become. So that's why awards are an important place for women to be represented. Um, and I do believe that several of the best films this year that I loved were directed by women and deserve to be celebrated. But here's the thing, we're unstoppable. Oscars or no Oscars, these women, everyone from <laughs> Alma Harrell to Lula Wong. Alma. To, you know, and there are, there's so many of us and we're gonna keep working. If you guys like what you see, subscribe right here.